after the horror of the English shires. As much as £50 billion worth of tracks and rails are to be ploughed through the countryside for the convenience of knocking off 20 minutes or so from the journey of London to Birmingham and the noble aim of trying to spread the South's wealth around the country. Today, HS2 started to dream of the project's design. But on top of the already enormous price tag, the boss of the project told Newsnight he's asking the government for permission to pay his top executives top dollar too. Expensive, late, overcrowded. The complaints are familiar, even though three million of us use a train every single day. There have been shiny upgrades to stations, attempts to deal with demand, but as more of us want to travel this way, space is running out. HS2 is meant to be the big solution, but protests, petitions and a £50 billion price tag stand in its way. MPs have signed off the superfast link between London and Birmingham for now. And the group that wants to build it today feels confident enough to start discussing the actual design. But can it be worth it? I asked the man who has the job of making sure it is. Today you're starting a discussion about the design, but are you confident that in a hundred years time people will be looking at HS2 and the way we sit here and look at these grand surroundings? Is there that kind of vision? Well, we're very privileged here in St Pancras. It is a masterpiece, as is King's Cross, which, which blends old and new. And so what today is all about with the design panel is having that discussion how do we get the project to stand the test of time? And that is the real challenge. The problem with that is that it comes with a very hefty price tag. Can you guarantee that the project won't go over budget? I can never guarantee anything personally. What I can do is put in place the decision-making process and the right people to make sure we make the right decisions and we can properly and adequately manage the, the budget. But you see when members of the public hear that it might cost as much as 50 billion and you can't guarantee that it won't be more than that. There's a real fear that people are being asked to sign up to a blank check to a project that won't deliver for several decades. Projects take a long time, but the most important thing is to understand why you're doing it and then stick to that vision. So why are you doing it? Why is it worth that price tag? It's nothing about railways and it's nothing about trains. It's nothing about trains? It's nothing about trains. It's all about people. It's about this, what we're seeing, a growing disparity in wealth and jobs and opportunities between a city in London which is globally competitive, which is separating away from the rest, rest of the UK. 10 million more people coming to the UK in the next 20 years, a million new homes in London. It's feeding a beast because this is where all the best jobs are. You can't keep doing that because London will never be the London we want it to be if that pressure cooker environment continues. So this new railway, first railway in 100 years north of, the, of London, will then allow business and wealth to distribute it across the nation. You know as well as I do, the evidence on that is decidedly mixed. Some economists believe HS2 would spread wealth around the country. Others believe exactly the opposite. It would just suck more into London. It'll do both. It will make more of the north accessible for commuters. It's a big part of it. There's no doubt about that. It'll free up commuter capacity from the north coming into London, but it'll also facilitate businesses moving north. Do you ever get fed up of grumpy Brits being a bit glass half empty about this? No, I think we constantly have to make the case. People forget the Olympics were seen as over budget, irrelevant, and a, a complete waste of public money in many cases right up until a few weeks before the Games. And certainly the first three or four years, constant criticism in the press. In the end, everyone became very proud of what happened, what the what, uh, UK could do. Do you ever get fed up with politicians appearing to be a bit uncertain about backing HS2? They appear to be rather fond of not quite changing their mind, but blowing hot and cold. We have to continue to win uh, both public acceptance and acceptance of both parties. I've been consistently saying, in the end, we cannot we, we don't work for one particular party, we're here to convince Parliament. How much would you pay to get the right people on this project? The worst money you can save is skimping on hiring the best people. So I'm determined that we hire the best people. We're not going to pay over the odds. We probably won't even pay what the private sector will pay. I'm sure we won't actually. There is some attraction to working on the biggest infrastructure project in the UK, but we have to have the flexibility to hire the right people now 
rather than when something gets into a problem in years to come. But as a public sector project, that will mean you'll have to ask permission from the government to employ people at those kinds of salaries, won't you? That's right, correct. But we've got to remember we are hiring project people, project people that will be held accountable for performance. If they don't perform, they'll go. Um, we'll ha they won't be on long-term government pensions or uh, long-term tenure, so they will survive on their performance. So how many people will you ask permission for and how much do you plan to pay them? At a, at a senior level, you're talking about people above the Prime Minister's salary. In the next um, six months, we need to hire 20 or 30 of those at least to get to do a project of this size. It's absolutely essential we get those people out. Just out of interest, you commute on the train every day as I understand it. Do you get much work done on the train? Um, I come in on Western Line. I think what was recorded is the most congested train in the UK. Uh, why is that? That's because Crossrail is 20 years late. That's because at crucial times people blinked and decided it wasn't value to the money and we couldn't spend this money. Now we're desperately trying to deliver it on time. So every time I travel on the Central Line and get hot and bothered and crowded, in the end it just reminds us, make the decisions at the right time. So David, thank you very much indeed for talking to us.